Hello, it's Rebecca and today is another book review day and this is my August book, I believe, for the Wordy Birds reading challenge. I know I'm a bit late with this, but I just haven't had the time to get a video done and the Wordy Birds reading challenge is to read 12 books over the year. Each month has a different category or theme and we talk about it on our Wordy Birds radio show and I will leave you lots of links down below so you can go and have a look at what we're getting up to. Anyway, so it was to read a book that was set in a different country, somewhere not the country that you live in. So I have been reading The White Road by Sarah Lotz, and I will read you the blurb and then talk to you about the book. Adrenaline junkie Simon Newman sneaks onto private land to explore a dangerous cave in Wales with a strange man he's met online. But Simon gets more than he bargained for when the expedition goes horribly wrong. He emerges, the only survivor, after a rainstorm traps the two in the cave. Simon thinks he's had a lucky escape. And then the video of his near-death experience goes viral. Suddenly, Simon finds himself more famous than he could have ever imagined. Now he's faced with an impossible task. He's got to defy death once again and film the entire thing. The whole world will be watching. There's only one place on earth for him to pit himself against the elements. Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. But Everest is also one of the deadliest spots on the planet. 280 people have died trying to reach its peak. And Simon's luck is about to run out. So, Sarah Lotz is a brilliant author and I've reviewed a lot of her books. She wrote The Three, Day Four, and she also writes as S.L. Grey with Louis Greenberg or Louis Greenberg. And I've reviewed a lot of their books and they are absolutely brilliant. Books that you just cannot put down. So I was really excited to see that Sarah Lotz had written another book. And although a really good book, not as good as The Three and Day Four. And I will leave my reviews of those books down below because they are absolutely outstanding books. But not to say this book wasn't good. It's so difficult when you've read really great books by an author and one just doesn't, doesn't hit the mark. So it's not a bad book. But anyway, so Simon and his friend Terry run a website it's quite a morbid website uh videoing places where people have died it's quite horrible and simon goes down into this cave in wales with a really weird guy kind of a bit of a drunk a bit of a loner a bit of a rambling man into this cave to video these dead bodies of people that have gone into the cave before and have died and one great thing about this book you felt the claustrophobia that Simon feels. If a book can really make you feel terrified. I mean, I hold my breath when I'm watching films and people are going into caves or tunnels and I can feel the pressure on my chest, but this book really made me feel it. And that I think was brilliant. So as he was crawling through really tiny spaces and he was explaining how he couldn't breathe and how he couldn't move and he had to twist his body in various ways to be able to squeeze through, I was holding my breath and I could feel the pressure of the rocks and the the whole cave just on me, which I thought is an amazing way of writing because you're really, really getting to your reader. So he finds these dead people and he's filming them. But then because of the rain, the cave floods and there's no way out. And if you imagine crawling through really tight spaces to get in, how difficult it would be to get back. And oh my goodness, you do hold your breath. So if you suffer severely with claustrophobia, perhaps this isn't a good book to read, but I'm kind of okay, but it still made me very tense. And the guy that he goes into the caves with dies. It happens fairly early on, so that's not really a giveaway. And he, when he comes out, it's kind of like a big deal that he's managed to get into this cave, survive, because he's hallucinating and he, you know, he's without food and without water for such a long time and you kind of really get into his head and it's it's absolutely brilliant description, really, really good. So then his friend decides it would be a good idea to go up Everest and film where people have died on Everest and something I don't know if is true but it's in the book that if somebody dies on Everest you have to leave their body there, you're not allowed to remove it. So there are a lot of corpses on Everest and a lot of the time they're covered up by snow so you don't see them but there could be like a foot hanging out or a head or something. So if you do go climbing Everest and if that is true you may just stumble across loads of dead people 
on the mountain. Not that it's something that I would particularly like to do. I'm not overly fit and I don't particularly like the cold. So, but if, if that's if that's your bag, if that's what you want to do, then then go for it. But it may be a little bit traumatising. I don't know. So he's gone up this mountain and he's met all these people who, who, who are doing it for all different reasons. Because, you know, some people do it for charity. Some people do it for just because they, they're weird and they like the adrenaline rush. And there's di there's different reasons. And there's a guy that goes up because his mother climbed it previously. And the chapters alternate between Simon and the mother, whose name I've forgotten. Hang on a second. Juliet. That's it. So Juliet has climbed the mountain and Simon is climbing the mountain. And they're doing it at different points. And it's it's really dark. There's a, there's a bit of a supernatural edge to it, which is the same in the three and day four. She adds a little bit of a supernatural thing to all the all the stories and the characters kind of have this sixth sense of things going on. And it was good, it was gripping because it kind of takes you on a, on a twisty turny road, which I like in stories where you kind of, you're surprised at the end of every chapter or as you're going along, there's just things that jump out at you that you weren't expecting. But like I said, I didn't enjoy it as much as the other two, but not to say this is a bad book. So I would definitely recommend reading it because it is dark, it makes your heart pound, it makes you think, it makes you scared. But not in a not in a ghostly kind of way or a horror film kind of way. It's just how the human mind works, how people react to certain situations. It's really, it's quite disturbing but in a really, really good way, which I know sounds peculiar, but that's the kind of thing I like. And if you've read any of uh, Sarah Lotz's other books or S.L. Grey, you'll fully understand why I like this kind of story. But I did enjoy it, just not as good as the others, but well worth a read because it does keep you gripped and it just it takes you on journeys that you just never expected to go on. So, yes, read this book. So if you'd like to hear any of my other book reviews, please subscribe. I put videos out every time I've read a book or done something bookish. So if you're interested in any of those things, uh, subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Have a good day. Bye bye.